Hi, I'm Moon Ho. I'm from North Korea. I escaped there when I was 26 years old. I invited Moon Ho to visit my former hometown in South Korea to see how it compares to his hometown in the North. Let's go to Seoul! Let's go to Seoul! Yeah. This story is a compelling one because Moon Ho is going to share his escape story publicly for the very first time. He left his entire family behind and crossed a treacherous land border into China, trekking all the way to Thailand where he searched for asylum from Kim Jong-un. In this video, I want to take Moon Ho around Seoul where I lived and taught English for two years. What does a North Korean refugee think about South Korea? Are the two countries similar or totally different? I'm ready to capture his raw emotion in this crazy Korean adventure. <laughs> Going to South Korea with a North Korean. This is this is fun. This is got first time on a plane. <laughs> Did you know that my friend is from North Korea? North Korea? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. And that's <laughs> Miko. Her face is like. Ah. Seriously, he is. You don't believe me? <laughs> it's gonna be below freezing in Seoul, so getting our jackets on now. Gotta get warm. Are you nervous to go through immigration? What if they catch you and they know you're from North Korea? <laughs> Thank you. Let me know. Bro, you made it! Yeah! Dude, welcome to South Korea! It feels so great to be back in Seoul, one of the world's most buzzing cities. Before I ask Moon Ho about his childhood in North Korea and how he escaped, I want to break the ice by taking him to my favorite fish market for breakfast. Are you hungry? Yeah! Yeah! Let's go! So as you can see, it's so big in here. There's so many different rows of fresh fish. It smells like the ocean. This fish market is the oldest and largest seafood market in Korea, housing 700 vendors who sell more than 300 tons of seafood every day. That was brutal. He just stabbed him in the eye. That was insane. Do you like it? Like me. Oh, he bites you? Really? Bro, be careful, man. That's okay. Bro, look at this Whoa. one. Look, he's smiling. Do you have a place like this in North Korea? Yeah, not, not this big, but very small and kind. <laughs> Behind us, she's cutting up some live octopus, but she, she's cutting it in pieces. We should try it. Excellent. This is what I ate before. This big? A little smaller. Oh. I put my hand in here and I ate it in one bite. You know what? I'll show you the video. It's like my first ever YouTube video. Live octopus in Korea. Okay, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my friends threw up. Were you chewing? Yeah, I chewed it for 20 minutes, man. This lady just rolled up with a bucket of fresh crab. She just puts it in the tank. There's so many of them fresh. What kind of fish do you want to try? King crab. King crab? That's my favorite. Can we buy some crab? Two. Oh my god, you speak English. That's amazing. He is from North Korea. He escaped. What do you think about that? Hi, Korean. <laughs> Oh, that's the penis fish? In English, spoon wall. It looks like a penis. Yeah, fine. <laughs> that's so strange. Uh, feels like a penis, right? Yeah. We have just bought this amazing looking crab. I'm so excited, man. Are you excited? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm not just a receptacle. I can follow her. Oh. Yes, I'm not. I'm not. Bye bye. Bye. We're following her upstairs. This is the best part of the market. This is the upstairs of the fish market. There's so many restaurants to choose from, but this lady is walking really fast and we're just trying to catch up. This is a plate of live octopus. It's called sannakchi. So the one I ate earlier, this in one bite. Whole. Whole. Yeah, you dip it in the sesame oil. Oh, it's sticking to my lip. It's the strangest feeling when it's like sticking onto your tongue, grabbing. So when you're growing up, you eat a lot of seafood? Every day. You know, originally I thought that you're not supposed to talk about North Korea here, but the people don't care. It's kind of like a stereotype thing. Stereotype thing, yeah. Like you can talk about it. Yes, I am. I do. Our king crab has just arrived and I'm literally shaking. I'm so hungry. Bro, this is one of my favorite meals in the world. King crab the from what? this. Yeah, king crab from this market. You can see the steam covering the lens right now from this crab. This thing was alive literally 20 minutes ago. And usually in the world, you can't get it this fresh and this plentiful. Mm. Oh. The taste is one thing, but the texture, it's perfect. The crab. color is perfect. The color is perfect, man. Everything is perfect. The best part about this is when you finish the crab in the head, there's all like the, the brain and they cook fried rice inside of it. 
Oh. I think he's too drunk. Oh, he's falling everywhere. Oh, 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 Holy crap. It's literally 12.30. Do you see that also in North Korea? Yeah. People like to drink in North Korea? We are Koreans. <laughs> that dude must have been well into his 70s and he basically couldn't even walk out of here. And everybody just keeps eating like it's normal. Like nothing ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is the best meal in the, for this year. I agree. Yeah. I think that was the best meal of the year. Thank now we, we will continue the adventure. Yeah. When I went to North Korea, I learned that ping pong is one of the most popular sports. And after Moonho says he's got game, I'm ready to challenge him to a match. We have found the ping pong room and Moonho is going down. I'm going to show you the spiciness. After a crazy heated match, we head outside into the freezing weather where I uncover Moonho's harrowing escape story. I was growing up in like a very, very small countryside. There's not much people there. After school, we just played in the nature. So you grew up like a normal childhood. Mm -hmm. You were happy. Yeah, my father was an engineer and my mother was, was a teacher. When did you first know that there's a, a different world? I lived in a dorm with my four roommates and there's a TV, all white and black. Suddenly I, I figured out some kind of signal from South Korea. In that time, we didn't know what, what is that. Should we stop to watching that or should we keep it? But it was fun. It was interesting. So yeah, let's keep it. It reminds me again and again, there's a world we don't know yet. When I decide to leave there, it's because after a semester, I had to go to army. And you didn't want to go? Yeah, I didn't want to go because if I go there, I thought there's no chance to like explore the world. <laughs> and then I moved to like the city nearby the border between China and North Korea. So you go to the border town. I got a problem. There's a broker who tried to help me. He asked me uh, some money to cross the border, but he lied to me. He stole your money? Yeah, kind of. How old were you at this time? 21, 22. And how much time did you spend in this border town? I stayed there four years. Four years? Yeah. That's the hardest time in my life so far. And what happened? How did you actually get across the border? Eventually, the broker who lied to me helped me <laughs> to cross the border. The same guy? Yeah, <laughs> after four years. In that time, I didn't expect that much. Oh, this time it's gonna be canceled again, I thought. But it happened. I crossed the border. The biggest challenge was the like family. It's because my family, they trusted me a lot. But in that time, I had to decide to leave. Should I stay there or should I move? And even now, it's been how many years since you talked to your parents? I was nine years old. Do you think That's about them every day? The most difficult thing is like uh, whenever you feel like uh, happy or sad, you're gonna remind your family. That's the biggest thing. There's no way to communicate with your mom. Like if you want to call her, you cannot email her, nothing. <laughs> There's no internet, so <laughs> we cannot email them. What happens if you get caught like on the border town? That's gonna be very dangerous. That's because especially to me, I'm a man. You go to jail, you think? At least. You think they would kill you? Yeah, it's possible. With the help of his broker, Moonho crossed the land border into China, eventually making his way illegally into Laos before arriving to his final destination, Thailand. All right, bro, it's, I gotta stop you in your story because it's so cold. Let's go get some food real quick yeah. and we'll learn more of it later. Sounds good. Okay. Hey guys, real quick, I want to give a shout out to MoneyGram for sponsoring this video. If you are a traveler, then you know how stressful it could be to get cash or send payments overseas. ATMs are not always reliable and airport exchange offices may not offer great exchange rates. That's why I use MoneyGram. It's a convenient and reliable way to send money in over 200 countries and territories. On the app, I can link my bank account, debit card, or credit card to send money to myself and then pick it up in cash or I can send money to my friends in other countries. 
If you are someone who travels often or lives far away from your loved ones or need to send money to loved ones, then MoneyGram is a fantastic option. They offer great rates when needing to pick up cash when traveling abroad, like I just did in Brazil. MoneyGram is convenient, fast, and reliable, so click the link down below to download the app. All right, now let's get back to the streets of Seoul. We are entering a North Korean restaurant here. Here we go. Good this is a table of North Korean food. That's why it's home. Is this like a comfort food for you? Like, does this food make you feel like home? Yeah. So this is awesome, man. This is a bowl of hot noodle soup with some spices in here. We have egg, bean sprouts, oh. celebrated lives again. Yeah, you have to make some or thank you. It's a respect to the, the, the chef. I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 really, really spicy, really flavorful. These noodles are like really uh, sticky. After you escaped and you made it to Bangkok, that was the moment where you felt like safe, I think. The moment I feel safe is the when I caught by the like Thailand police. The police, how do they find you? We have to find them. You find them? Yeah. So you just said, okay, I'm here. We shake a hand. Hey. <laughs> when you go to the police station, what do they say to you? There's a lot of North Korean refugees up there. Mm. So they already knew what kind of process there. Uh, okay, come. We went to jail. You went to jail? Yeah. What was it like? It was like a vacation. <laughs> After a long, tired, like, escaping journey. They give you food? Yeah, sure. Okay, so then after jail, what happened? There's a refugee camp. Oh, you went to a refugee yeah. camp. What did you think the first time when you like look out the window and you see all the lights and all the people? I thought, oh, my decision was right. Can you ask her where she's from in North Korea? Yangang Yangang province, nearby the Baekdu mountain. Can you tell her that I went to Pyongyang and I enjoyed it? Okay. Thank you very much. She said thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I didn't meet Kim Jong-un, did you? Hey. Do you hope to meet him someday? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Are you scared of him? <laughs> Thanks to you, because of you like North Korea. She said even we left because of we don't satisfy the life there. But it's still our hometown. <laughs> Time to hit the bitter cold streets. <laughs> After lunch, Moonho and I set off to explore the city. We found this incredibly peaceful spot up by this temple. There's a monk hitting the gong right now. And we have incredible views overlooking the city. This is a cool moment, bro. Any Buddhist temple that I visit in the world is just always so peaceful. Moonho, what makes you happy in life? You makes me happy. <laughs> I'm not a religious person, but when I'm praying, you pray a lot? I feel happy. Yeah. Right, we gotta move because we are literally freezing. Moonho's running down the stairs. You're like a movie character. You're like an actor in a movie. I'm an actor. You are an actor. Yeah. My life is, is a film. I'm making film right now. I'm working on my screenplay right now. <laughs> That's good. Moonho and I are chilling in the backseat of a taxi, going to the next place. Having a chat about life. What is the value of escaping? I lost my connection with my family and my old friends. Did, Did I make a mistake? Like that kind of feeling. Do you feel selfish? In yeah, some way, but I feel like I lost a bigger thing. I spent my almost my whole life in North Korea. I understand the freedom is not free, but I feel like I pay. I paid too much. Do you think about this stuff a lot? Yeah, sometimes when I have time. We are inside a massive shopping mall called Latte World Mall. What do you think of it? That's too much. There's too many things in here. I don't even know where to look. What, what are we going to buy? Too many options. If I want a sweater, there's a lot of options. So I cannot choose. Sometimes it's better. One, you want to buy a sweater? Yeah, okay, yeah, just, just take one, one sweater. A lot of sock options here. How can you choose which socks to get? There's a thousand options. I'm going to show you how, how I choose. First of all, you should close your eyes and just grab. Okay, take that one. Hmm, it's too... <laughs> there is a new experience in Seoul that I've been wanting to do for years. Go to the top of the Lotte Tower, the sixth tallest building on Earth. I'm taking Moon Ho with me and I just hope he's not scared of heights. The thing is, in Pyongyang, I noticed that like, there's buildings, but there's no people in them. <laughs> it's just for showing. Is it true? No, it's not 
for just showing they're trying to do like using that but there's no like uh, construction like materials so they can finish the interior uh, people couldn't live there behind us is the tallest tower in Seoul and we're about to go to the top top we're getting in the elevator to go up 123 floors in Pyongyang's 105 We have just arrived at the top. Let's look at the view, bro. Wow, it's so beautiful. Whoa, bro. Whoa. When you step your feet, it's a glass and it goes straight down. What do you feel? I like it. It's the trippiest thing ever. Like if you're scared of heights, this is not a place for you. I like it. This kind of you like heights? You like yeah. tall buildings? Yeah. I don't have any phobia. Fear. Fear. Dude, the views of Seoul are beautiful. Munho, what are your goals in life? Make a good film about the uh, Korean's life. Not North Korean, not South Korean, Korean's life. Just Korean? Yeah. I wrote a book like about the road trip in America <laughs> with the three North Korean guys. That's awesome! It's so interesting how we're standing here on top of the tallest building in Seoul and just looking over that mountain and knowing that that is North Korea. It's the same land, bro. Yeah, it, we, can, we can smell it even, the North Korean smell. What do you want to say to people who they think so badly about North Korea. Yeah, I think uh, the media tends to like uh, focus on the dark side of North Korea, but they should know there's life to people, not just the uh, government. We're standing on the outside sky deck, and that is the actual top right there. After we take in our last views of the city, we head underground to see how Seoul's metro compares to the one in Pyongyang. They always play this song to know when it arrives. Navigating this metro is like a maze. There's so many stops. It's actually the world's most extensive public transportation system, connecting the most amount of land efficiently. Really? Yeah. Pyongyang is the deepest underground in the world, and Seoul is the most extensive. This one is way more modern, more light. To be honest, my favorite part about North Korea was the metro. Oh yeah, there's a lot of yeah, like, famous paintings. Yeah, paintings and Kim Jong-un big statues. <laughs> I went to Pyongyang secretly. I crossed the river, Daedong River. In that time, it was normal, so I didn't think that much. Yeah. yeah. What would you say if you saw a white person on the Pyongyang metro? What would you think? I feel like, oh, very grateful. That's because someone interested in, in my country. That's a good thing. Did you know English at that time in Pyongyang? Very, very limited. We're just a couple of kids on a, on a metro. I want to make a comment that my camera's in the middle of the metro right now and there's people everywhere and nobody's even bothering. They're just all looking at their phones. We have entered one of my favorite districts here called Myeongdong. It's like a shopping district, there's street food. Do you want to try some street food? Oh yeah, sure. Street Myeongdong The times never seem to be getting some tteokbokki, which is one of my favorite Korean street foods. Tell me that. It's basically like a rice cake that's smothered in this red spicy sauce. Cheers, bro. Cheers. Mmm. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Mmm. Temperature hot and spicy hot. Is the tteokbokki in North Korea the same taste or is it a different taste? I didn't try. I've never tried. Oh. Tteokbokki. So it's not, it's not popular in North Korea as a snack? This is called a two for one. Mm. The way I describe dopoki is like one big piece of rice with red sauce on it, spicy. It's the version of kakdugi in rice. Mm -hmm. What is this? This is a tang furu. Let's try one. Thank you. This is sugar-coated fruit on a stick. I'm going for the grape first. Whoa, really like sweet. It. <laughs> it's a hard coat of sugar on the outside and then just a piece of fruit in the middle. Really good. You get that crunch from that sweetness and then the burst of flavor from the fruit. It's good, right? Mm. Leave it to the Koreans to invent some crazy things when you eat. Sometimes I feel like this kind of thing is wealthy. Wealthy is a good thing. Yeah. But sometimes too, too much. much things. I agree. Sometimes simple is, simple is the best. <laughs> simple life is the best. What does freedom mean to you? Freedom is a chance to like go to travel or study whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Yeah. Do you think everyone in North Korea should have the chance to be free? 
Definitely. Yeah. yeah. What I really admire about Moonho is he left all by himself. He left his family behind, his friends behind, because he knew of a better world out there that he really was determined to discover. So many people don't do that. And I think people, people watching this video will feel very inspired by you. Thank you, Wolf. Yeah, man. Yeah. But you know, the night is young. We are going to party our asses off tonight. It's going to be epic. We heard about a secret North Korean karaoke bar in Incheon, a nearby city that is the largest gathering place for North Korean refugees in the South. To be honest, bro, I hate karaoke, but something tells me it's gonna be fun because I'm with North Koreans. It's different. <laughs> hey! Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm Sophia. I'm Drew. Yeah. This place is so interesting. It's like a big communal room. Yeah. Oh, you escaped when? 2008. How old were you when you escaped? Seven. 17. You went through China? Yes. Was it scary? Very scary. When you escaped, you were by yourself? No, with my friend. And then did you also go through Thailand? Of course. Do you like South Korea more than North Korea? North Korea is my hometown. The old lady has just sat down and joined us. So now it's a, it's a table of five North Koreans and myself. When did you come to South Korea? 2010. 2010. Which Korea do you prefer, North or South? South Korea. She said South Korea? Yeah. Tell me about the Norebang. The owner is North Korea. They wanted to come here, North Koreans, and getting stressed out. Really singing and dancing. This is so bizarre. I'm the only non-North Korean person in this room right now. Like, I didn't even get this experience in North Korea. This is way cooler. This lady is like proper North Korean opera singer. And apparently she was really famous there. She's really good. Muno, I think you should go on stage and sing a song. Good job, bro. Honestly, it felt like I was tripping inside this karaoke bar. Then again, hanging out with Moonho has been a trip all by itself. I still can't imagine what he's gone through. Despite growing up in completely different worlds in two countries that are considered enemies, I feel like we are brothers. We both love good food, playing ping pong, and traveling around the world. I am honored to help Moonho share his story publicly for the first time, and I'll never forget our bittersweet goodbye. Awesome hanging out, man. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to see more amazing stories from every country in the world, and I'll see you guys next week.